<laughs> so wonderful to see you this morning. And on this last Easter Sunday, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. All right. Alleluia. All right. We make it sound like there's a lot of people here. <laughs> All right, welcome once again to North Falmouth Congregational Church, and I'm Reverend Christina Williams, and welcome to all of you who have joined us in person, and also welcome to all of you who have joined us on Facebook or Zoom. We welcome you this morning. Today, as you just heard, is Mission Sunday, and we, after worship, we're going to have a little bit of a shorter worship this morning, and then we are going to congregate in Covenant Room to see what we will be doing. There is raking and lopping and some stuff to do outside the church. I brought two rakes and um, I know probably some of you brought some equipment as well. We also have indoor projects. I don't know them all. Carol Lee's got most of the list, uh, but one of them is also for those of you who don't want to move around. Debbie has put together some labels um, to be put on envelopes for upcoming mailings this year, and it would be a big help to her. So doing something like that and just sitting and talking, enjoying your coffee and some food and putting labels on envelopes would be wonderful as well. So any way that you can help, we would certainly welcome today. Next week is a Pentecostal Sunday, and we will hopefully be outside. That's the plan, God. So we'll pray for that, that we'll be outside, um, and we will be having lots of red, so wear your red for next Sunday, and also we will be making prayer flags to fly outside uh, next week during Pentecost Friday, uh, Sunday. Also, you may have already noticed that an email went out for an e-vote for Reverend, Reverend Dr. Claire Bamberg, who is the consultant who will be coming to us and it is a vote to approve her phase one fee and so that went out on thursday it went out on yesterday and it will go out again tomorrow and so far the votes have been all in unanimously in favor and no no so um looks like that will come to fruition and we'll have uh, reverend dr claire bamberg start with us so please if you haven't voted already please check your email for yesterday or you can wait till tomorrow for that email to come through but do vote we'd appreciate it um on june 3rd at 10 a.m we will be having a it's also choir practice i know that but also we will be having a new member exploration session i know some some folks are interested in becoming new members so they come to this session, this information session, and then sometime in June, they will be coming members of our church. On June 4th is Confirmation Sunday. Um, our three confirmands, Nolan Clements, George Nuemi, and, um, oh my goodness, <laughs> Theo. Theo Allenby will be coming uh, members of the church and, and will be giving their statements of belief. And then after that, I will be on vacation June 8th through 18th, and Lisa Allen will be covering the pulpit for me on June 11th, and Peter Allenby will be covering the pulpit on June 18th, and I'll be in, in the air when that happens. So please uh, mark your calendars for all of that coming up. Good morning. Wow, look who's here. This is wonderful. Oh. Raylan's following Bella. Oh, that's. <laughs> so let's take a deep breath and bring ourselves into this holy and sacred space as we come to worship God and are brought together with our music.
please join me in the call to worship. What would God have us do? What gifts do we have in the church of God? Lord, guard, guide our lives and our service. Lord, our ministry. Oh, I promise. Help us, O oh Lord, to look beyond words. Come, let us worship God with thanksgiving for gifts of ministry. Let us praise God with joyful hearts. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able, and the insert is our first song of thanksgiving. Rejoice in the Lord always. We'll sing two, two stanzas. Rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice. Please join me in the unison prayer of confession. Waiting God, change and challenge are always difficult. We are more inclined to turn our backs on opportunities, service, and pitch in to effect the needed changes that will promote healing and wholeness. Forgive us when we give lip service to you and then slip into inaction. Give us courage to be willing disciples. Help us to be the people of promise and hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus has opened the doors for service to each one of us. We have been freed from our fears and doubts. Rejoice, dear friends. In the name of Jesus, we are forgiven and healed. Amen. Let us join our voices together in our opening hymn, God is here as we, your people, meet. We will only sing verses 1 and 4, number 70. You are, rise as you are able in body or spirit. be seated. Our New Testament reading this morning is in Luke 4, 14 to 21, and it's on page 74 in your pew Bible if you want to follow. 2,000 years ago, Jesus entered our world, a world of poverty, oppression, injustice, and a war. It was a world where hope was in short supply. 
Why did Jesus come? An essential part of Jesus' mission was having was the loving sacrifice he made on the cross so that we might know what love in action truly looks like to save us from us save us from our sins and to give us promise of new life to resurrection but his mission was so much more than his death hear these holy words a reading from Luke 14 to 24 14 to 21 then Jesus in the power of the spirit returned to Galilee and a report about him spread through all of the surrounding regions. He began to teach in the synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, was, he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The word of God for the people of God. Thank Thanks be to God. Jesus goes back to his hometown to share some important news with the people he's known all his life. They've been hearing rumors of his ministry around the countryside, and they're excited to hear what their hometown boy has to say. So in the synagogue, he's handed a scroll, and he unrolls it, and he reads this piece from the scripture of Isaiah. And then he puts it away, and he proclaims that he has come to fill the scripture. You could have dropped a pin in that synagogue. They were not happy at all. Was he proclaiming that he was the Messiah? How scandalous. As Jesus said himself when he read the scroll, he came to preach the good news to the poor and the poor in spirit. He came to proclaim the release of the captives who were captive to the law, which meant that some religious leaders were so strict about following the letter of the law that the poor suffered. He came to make people whole again, even if they were despised by everyone else. He came to heal those who were blinded to the ways of the world. He came to free those who were oppressed by worldly powers. And he came to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the Jubilee year, in which all depths were forgiven, land was restored to the original owners, every slave was set free, no wonder he got into trouble. No wonder his home crowd was upset. Jesus' mission was to shake things up. But this just wasn't Jesus' mission. This was God's vision and God's dream for the world. A world where so many on this good earth, even now, hope for a world like Jesus talked about in scripture. He came to give people hope and freedom. He came to give them and us a glimpse of what God's kingdom is to really look like. Now, as we know, Jesus' mission was mostly among the impoverished, the weak, the hurting, and the rejected in society. For those who were well off, they could just be just as impoverished, weak and hurting in spirit. But for all those Jesus encountered in his ministry, he wanted them to know their true identity and absolute worth as God's beloved. He wanted them to know that they were forgiven and that God's love was unconditional. Through his words and actions, Jesus embodied that love all the way to the cross. 
Rooted in his Jewish faith, Jesus expressed God's deep compassion and concern for all people, but especially for those in need. In the Old Testament, God continually ca called on God's people to reflect God's heart to those around them. They were called to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly, so that there would be no poor among them. They were, this was God's dream and vision for our world. But many struggled to walk in the ways of, the, of, of God. So God became flesh in Jesus to reconcile a broken world, to put us in right relationship with God and all creation, and to un usher in the kingdom of righteousness, peace, and justice. So we still live in a world that is in need of God's ministry. The needy, those impoverished, those who live under the injustices of society and who are in pain. As God's people, we are called to show God's love and welcome to all those who need it. We are called to be Jesus' hands and feet in a hurting world. We are to follow Jesus' way sincerely. That isn't optional for us. We too feel the deep need of those around us to be part of Jesus' mission. God's vision of God's kingdom is our vision too. Like Jesus, the disciples and the saints gone before us, the responsibility of fulfilling God's dream has been entrusted to each of us and this church. As a time approaches for us to begin on the future that awaits our church, we will wonder together, who are we? How do we stand tall? How do we stand apart from other churches? And what would be lost if we weren't here? And what do we have gifts for? What do we have energy for? What do we have passion for? Once the answers to our powerful questions start to emerge, let us hold on to the hope that God will send us the people and gifts that we need to help us do what God needs our particular church to do in this world. Amazingly, I have found that true in my own life when things get difficult and when things are just starting to turn around. Have you ever noticed that? That things start to fall into place. God brings in the right people and the right circumstances so that your God and what you want are flowing the same way that you are flowing with God's dream. And it always happens in a way that I never could have imagined it. Can we as a church have faith in God's miraculous ways for us? The future is unknown, but it is still an invitation for us to be open and curious and adventurous for what's to come, to shine a light on new ideas that we never thought about before, even if they do seem far-fetched. We are invited to be patient, to listen deeply to one another and to the Spirit's guidance and inspiration. We are in God's timetable, not ours, but answers will emerge. Today, we take some time to lovingly tend to our building and grounds. And it is here in this sacred place we find what matters most in being church, community, friendship, and the opportunities for us to serve. It is here that we find meaning, caring, and purpose. Or you wouldn't be here, right? So the future awaits us. 
God is waiting. Let us tend to this garden we call North Salmouth Congregational Church so that it may flourish and grow into the future as a vibrant community that seeks to serve its neighbors. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we faithfully step into the unknown, bless us and help us to discern your dream for us. Send the right people with the right gifts to join us in this holy endeavor. We pray for our consultant, bless the guidance and wisdom she will bring to us. Bring forth the right people to join the leadership team. Give them the strength and grace for the work they will be doing. We pray for clarity of vision and purpose so that we might become energized about who we are and where we are going. We pray for our entire congregation and for those who will come join us on this holy journey. May we be steadfast in our faith, in our love for one another, and our desire to be your church. Amen. Let us join our voices together in our responsive hymn called as partners in Christ's service, verses one and two, number 495. You may rise in body or spirit as you are able. may be seated. We come to our time of prayer, and after the pastoral prayer, each of you has the opportunity to lift up who you would like us to pray for today, either out loud or in your hearts. And when you do say it out loud together, we say, O oh Lord, hear our prayers. So let us be in prayer. Gracious God, anoint us with your spirit so that we too can bring the good news of your love, justice, and compassion to our neighbors. Inspire us to freely proclaim release to those who are bound what, by what holds them back. Help us set free those who are opposed to the ways of the world. Guide us to become a people who boldly proclaim your reign is possible, even when the world says otherwise. For in you, all things are possible. May we hold on to the hope as a church. May we believe we can do big things in your name. We hold in our prayers this day, all the summer's tourists coming to the, this beautiful place. And we pray especially for those who work hard to serve them the restaurant workers, the waiters, the line cooks, the bus people, the hotel workers who sweep, clean, and do laundry day after day. We pray for those who work on boats, docks, and ticket counters for the ferries. We pray for those experiencing homelessness who hold out hope for an affordable place to live, even as they take advantage of summer employment, working two or more jobs, but still can't make ends meet. We pray for all those who work behind the scenes during the summer. You notice them, God. Help us to notice all who go unnoticed, who work behind the scenes to make our lives easier and our lifestyles possible. 
Lord, in your mercy, we pray especially for our families and neighbors, our church, nation, world, and even our enemies. Receive our concerns and hopes and dreams for each of them. We pray for healing and strength for all those we lift in prayer this day, whether we speak our joys out loud or concerns out loud or in the silence of our hearts. So today I bring Dick Cudmore to our prayers. O oh Lord, hear 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 our prayers. Oh for Cheeto, O oh Lord, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. God and community, holy and one, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. the many ways that this church serves our neighbors and for the future of our church. It is with gratitude that we now accept our offering.
Let us join together in the unison prayer of thanksgiving found in your order of worship. Gracious God, through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus, you have given immeasurable grace to us. We present these gifts as symbol of the ministries you have given us to do. Use them and you us to do greater good in your world. May these offerings symbolize our love for you and our commitment to serve Christ. Amen. You may be up. Oh, no, you got to stay. You got to stay up, right? So we will be singing our last hymn, which is an insert in your order of worship. Right. I couldn't resist seeing at least a couple verses from the song, but on the last time we sing the refrain, it's gonna go like this. Raking in the leaves, <laughs> raking in the leaves, here we come rejoicing, raking in the leaves, and so on. <laughs> so we will sing the first two verses, the refrain the first time the regular way, then we'll sing the second verse, and we'll do the refrain, what, a couple of times? Just so you know that we're doing some work around here. All right. <laughs> to that. I've got to keep my rake up here. <laughs> go in peace, my friends. Go in service. Go and serve your neighbor. Serve each other and serve this church. Let our worship has ended, but our service literally begins right after worship. So join us, talk to some coffee and conversation, and then get out there and do some work. And thank you for coming this morning and participating in all of this. Amen. Amen. Would today be a good day for them to march out to the music? Out to the sure, band? we could march out to the music. Absolutely. You ready to do some marching? Mm -hmm. 